Hello, everyone, and welcome to session eight of Financial Statement Analysis Series by Financial Shah Classes. I'm Shailesh, and I will be continuing the discussion where we left off in reading seven video analyzing revenues via various different sources. Now, in session seven, we discussed one can analyze revenues at a product or a service level by either digging granular data at a product level. Moreover, you can also view it from a perspective of manufacturing revenue and a trading revenue concept. We have taken examples of a couple of listed Indian companies uh, to make a case study at point. Now, for viewers who haven't taken a look at that video, I would request you to take a look at that video first before you begin with this series. In today's session in reading eight, we will be continuing with the remaining two factors of analyzing revenues at a product or a service level, which are commoditized revenue versus specialized product revenues and key product revenues. Before we begin with the first concept, which is commoditized versus specialized product revenue, let me first give you a bit of a background. Now, a lot of companies tend to manufacture products in-house and similarly, they also tend to give out or rather outsource these manufacturing activities to some other players who have that advantage of, of you know huge scale and at the same time maybe it is very well possible that the products may be commodity in nature which can be easily manufactured by anyone else they buy them from those particular manufacturers brand them under their own tutelage and then sell it out there those would be trading revenues and in-house manufacturing would be the manufacturing at the same time certain businesses don't even give out these or rather outsourced the, the commoditized commodity products. So they tend to even manufacture those commodity products in-house, which is completely fine if you have that capacity, energy, and likewise manpower to take care of those things, which is where we will be taking a case study at point, the Garware Technofibers. Now, Garware Technofibers are basically uh, a particular listed Indian company, which is a global player in the field of synthetic cordage and fibers. Now, in 2012, Vayu Garware took reins of the company from his father and eventually took a lot of strategic decisions around developing the R&D de department and increased crazy amount of R&D expenditures around manufacturing value-added products because the cost of failure of nets was very high and customers were willing to pay high amounts for value-added products where the life of those nets are very long, which is where they started manufacturing not just you know, the commodity nets, but also specialized nets in-house. So they basically divided all the products into two aspects. One would be a commodity product, which would be slightly cheap in nature, but not that longevity. At the same time, there would be certain products which would be expensive, but they come with longevity. Now, Usually what happens is this, this data point around specialized or commodity products is not readily available, but can play a huge role in understanding how the business has evolved over the period of time, which is why we have taken Garware Technofibers as a case study. Point. So usually what is the approach to source revenues or rather to source information around uh, breakup of revenues? What you do is you open an annual report, you directly go to the income statement. So this is Garvari Technofiber Annual Report 2020. I'm just going to go to the income statement, page 117, where we take a look at the footnote number, which is note number 30. And we go to the footnote number, which is on page 138. Now, to see whether the specialized or commodity revenue breakup is available. But clearly, as we can see, there's only manufacturing and traded goods available. Now, there is no such thing mentioned by the business that the manufacturing would be the specialized businesses or specialized products. So don't ever assume this until you have a clarity from the management that all specialized products are manufactured in-house and the commodity products are traded outside, which by the way is not really the case with Garvare Technofiber. So which is why until you have that clarity, you can't really take it for granted that manufactured revenues would be the specialized products and the traded products or traded goods would be the commodity products, which is where, you know, gives us another source, which we discussed in reading seven, which was MGT9. Now, MGT9 form, if we take a look at on page number 33, in the MGT9 form of the business, you will see that nettings, twines, ropes, and yarns breakup is available. However, even within nettings, there are commodity nettings and there are specialized nettings. Similarly, twines, ropes, and yarns. So clearly, we don't really have that information available. 
Now, what we are going to discuss is at times you can source this information from some other sources as well, which can be of immense help for you to analyze any particular business. One would be management interviews and second would be credit rating reports. So here is an example of a management interview given by Vayu Garware, the, you know, the managing director of the business uh, with talking about the evolution of their business. Now, this link is available on the written blog from our forum. You can always access that link to take a look at this interview, but at times to get more granular data around the businesses, you need to take a look at management interviews in media. So when you actually go through this interview, you will find a very interesting line in the interview. Five to six years ago, the value added products, innovative products were only 30% of our sales, but now they have gone up to 70% of our sales. Now, these value-added products, as explained earlier, they come with higher margins. So, which is why over the years, because the share of the higher margin products within the total revenue of the business increase, the profit margins of the business also increased crazily. And by the way, you know, we you know started checking it in to verify it from a couple of other sources. In fact, we went to the credit rating report of Ikra. Uh, in the credit rating report of Ikra, we could verify this information readily available on page two. Now, this is the credit rating report from ICRA on you know, on the Garware Technofibers dated as of Feb 2021. When you open this uh, report, credit research report, on second page, they have given this information. The share of value-added products went up to 70 to 75% from 35% four years back. Now, this is precisely the information which we are looking for. Like I said, sometimes people don't really know where to gather data. Financial statement analysis can be a killer weapon for you guys if you know all the sources where you can extract these qualitative as well as quantitative data points. So don't be so comfortable that every data point would be available in the footnotes of income statement. At times, you may actually have to go to phone call, investor presentations, company reports, chairman speech, media interviews, credit research reports, and other sector coverage reports to get to gather data around different cuts, which may help you understand the business much better. Now, to take further the analysis, you can always pen it down on you know, an image which you have in front of your screen where FI15 revenues were nearly 782 crores and FI20, the revenues were 953 crores. 70% products were commodity and 30% products were value-added products, but it's exactly the opposite in FI2020 and which is where you could see that the margins of the business have also grown. You don't really have the margin data here because I haven't really taught you as of now how to compute margins. But like I said, revenues drive earnings and earnings drive valuations. The composition of revenue will drive the earnings in a very different direction, which is why it's so important to take a look at composition of revenues through different angles. Precisely what we are trying to cover in this reading as well as in the previous reading through our lectures and case study at point. From annual report 2021, in fact, in the company's annual report, you will find a discussion around profitability that it has increased drastically over the past few years, owing to the value added product composition increasing. Now you can you know, search, you can go through the entire annual report, but you will not find a breakup around value added products or commodity products for technofibers, Garware technofibers. Now, this is one another source which you can add to your kitty to analyze different revenues, management interviews, credit research reports, MGT9, revenue footnotes, con call, investor presentations, and likewise. All right, now let's get started with the second point, which is of really huge importance for today's discussion, that is taking a look at key products or anchor products for any business. For example, as a case study in point, we have taken Vinati Organics. Now, Vinati Organics is world's second largest producer of ATBS and IBB products. Now, these are um, you know, uh, compounds which are used in the processes. IBB is isobutyl benzene and ATBS. These are extremely uh, uh, you know, uh, high demand products in global markets, which is where Vinati Organic has a 65% market share in producing these products globally. Now, to take a look at ATBS and IBB revenue figures, 
one analyst may take a look at the annual report you know the traditional approach would be to go to income statement which happens to be on page 84 uh when you take a look at income statement you will know that on note 17 maybe perhaps you will have clarity how much revenue is being generated from ibb and atbs because trust me when you are a market shareholder in the entire industry for you to actually take a look at the revenue contribution or what kind of revenue your company is generating from that product is of huge importance and the growth of the company the growth of that product or the demand of that product in the industry drives the growth of that particular product so which is why it's genuinely important to take a look at the key product revenues when you're trying to analyze any particular business because demand of that product grows so naturally the more scope you have to grow further in that domain now take a look at let's take a look at the footnote of Infinity organics let me open page 109 when you take a look at 109 obviously you don't really see anything around the key products which is available here makes you think maybe perhaps we should take a look at you know the mgt9 form which happens to be on page 56 if we take a look at mgt9 form you will see that they have given a broad level uh, category of organic and inorganic chemicals compounds where business seems to be generating 100 percent revenue that you know begins the thought process maybe perhaps we should take a look at the con calls or investor presentations or credit research reports but you don't need to go that far you know at times businesses are very careful in terms of presenting their data of key products in their annual report itself either through uh you know couple of infographic fashion or through charts now you can refer to page 50 sorry page 13 of this annual report where you will find a detailed breakdown of how much revenue is being generated from IBB and how much revenue is being generated from ATBS. Trust me, these are not the only two chemicals which Vinati Organic manufactures, but they happen to be a market leader in that domain, which is why it's really important for you to keep a track of these key products. Now, when you take a look at this, you will see that 638 crores are being manufactured from ATBS and IBB is 207 crores. Moreover, certain combinations are also usually, uh, you know, a data may also be available in the annual report explaining IBB, ATBS and some other product contributes around 75% or 65% of the overall revenue of the business. You know, these bucketed data is also very important. So for an analyst to keep a track of this data over a period of time, either sourcing through these infographics or through company con calls or discussions is really important. However, having said that, just taking a look at the key product of a business and its growth doesn't necessarily mean that the overall business is going to grow because an analyst needs to keep in mind a holistic perspective of how a business is growing, how much revenue that particular product is contributing. It may very well happen that a business may choose a different line altogether of product or a business where the overall conglomerate is wanting to grow. So one such example is ITC. So tobacco contributes nearly 65% to 70% revenue into ITC. However, given the last 10 years data, you will see that the growth of FMCG sector or FMCG contribution to the overall revenue of ITC business has been consistently growing. There hasn't been significant capex, obviously owing to government regulations in the tobacco domain. However, the business seems to be expanding crazily towards the FMCG space as well. So, which is why right now maybe that particular key product is contributing majority of the revenue for your business. It need not mean it will always stay that way. Keeping a track of these factors will help you analyze a business in a much better fashion. Hope you guys liked today's discussion. In case if you have any queries, please do mention it in the comments. You can also read the same post on our website on the financial statement analysis series and you can ask us questions here as well in the comment section. Please do like, subscribe to our channel. You can also find more informative content on our Instagram channel as well as YouTube channel. Our Instagram handle is Pinnacle underscore Shah. All right. Now that's it for today's discussion. I look forward to having you guys in the next series. Thank you so much for the time.